get growing. It's Jo Swan here, the educational gardener from Bulwell Forest Garden and we are at the end of February by the time you get your packs and it's a beautiful day, beautiful spring-like day and the days are getting longer and the sun's shining so let's get cracking, let's get growing. So let's start with this week's packs and although it's a beautiful day we won't get too carried away so we're still focusing on hardy plants and we're not going to get too impatient and start sowing um, things that can't withstand the frost because it could still, you know, temperatures are set to sort of plummet again um, so it's still quite early in the season. So you have got a wild carrot plant and then because it's always exciting this time of year to plant seeds so we're going to go with some pot marigold calendulas seeds and also something to eat we've got some white lisbon uh, spring onion seeds as well so we'll start with the wild carrot so why are we growing wild carrot so i'm not expecting you to eat these the reason why we're growing these is for their wildlife value so a wild carrot is an umbelliferous plant. Now it sounds like a bit a, a big word, but it just it's a word that describes the plant's flower shape. So it's like an umbrella, an upside umbrella. And usually plants that are in the umbelliferous family, like carrots, angelica, there's lots of cow parsley. There's a really really good plants for lots of pollinated insects like lacewings and hoverflies. So we're going to grow this for its wildlife value. Um, so it came out of a packet of wildflower seeds. So the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to look as ever, look at the base of the plant and I can see that I've got quite um, a lot of roots there. So there's a good root system. It's poking through the pot. It's filled the pot up. So what do I need to do? I need to put it into a bigger pot. Okay, so let's take it out of its current home. Oh, look at that. So what I'm going to do here is just sort of... I don't think it's... I don't think I can be too rough, but I'll take out some of that old growth, tease them out a bit. And then I've got a bigger pot and I'm going to put compost in. I've got peat-free compost. I'm going to go about half full and then I'm going to put my plant in the middle hold its leaves with my left hand because I am right handed and I'll put my compost in around it and give it a good press down and I can put a bit more compost in there and then I'll give it a water I'll stick a label in it I did make one oh well um, and then that can just go outside it's totally hardy it'll be fine and then the next thing you've got in your pack again we're going to grow these for wildlife so we've got pot marigolds these are called calendulas we've got two different varieties this one's called nova and this one's called indian prince and i think the colors will look quite nice together if we hopefully we'll get a mixture of these and as you can see on both packets this is attracts wildlife and this one is an rhs plant for pollinators so they're really really good um, to grow calendulas are really really good to grow in amongst your vegetables so you should have pinch of seeds so I'm just going to put mine in a little fruit punnet making sure it's got holes in the bottom so I'm going to put my peat free compost in and I'm just going to do what's called broadcasting which is just scattering the seeds over the surface so I'll get a few of each seeds don't want too many 
because then I'll have a big job when it comes to pricking them out. So I'm going to sew them quite thinly. And then I'm going to cover them up with a little bit of compost. Not too much, don't put them too deep, otherwise they'll rot. I've got a label for these ones. And I would water them with a watering can with a fine rose on the end, so I'm not going to wash them out. And then what I would do is get another plastic top and put it on as a propagator lid to keep them nice and warm. And I'm going to grow them inside the polytunnel. You could put them on a windowsill. I mean, they are hardy, but they won't germinate if it does get really cold outside. So the same with the spring onions, really. So these are a variety called White Lisbon and they are quite hardy but again they might need a little bit of warmth just to get them started off so I've, I'm doing these in toilet roll tubes um, and the idea with doing them in toilet roll tubes is that I can plant the whole thing out without disturbing them so I'm going to dip a hole so I've got how many I've got seven I've got seven in here and they're inside a fruit punnet which has got holes in the bottom just to contain them really so I'm going to dip a hole about an inch deep in each of my tubes and dip 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 in and then I've got my seeds I'm going to put my seeds in my left hand because I'm right handed in the palm of my left hand so what I'm going to do here is rather than sow them individually is I'm going to grow them in clumps well some of you have been on the scheme for um, for a while we'll, we'll have done this before and what we do with this is we grow them in here in a clump we plant them in a clump and then they'll all grow in a nice clump and then we'll harvest them all together so it's quite um, a good labour saving device so what I'm aiming for here is to get a pinch roughly of about five or six seeds so I've got like a little let's have a look if I'm right there well, that's about four but if you get if you get four that's fine it doesn't it's not exact so I'm going to get another pinch the bigger pinch this time and then I'm going to put a pinch of about five or six seeds into each dipped hole in each tube put a little bit of compost on top of each one press them down and then I would water them again with a fine rose got my label in and then I'm going to put a plastic propagator lid on this again to try and give them a bit of warmth to get them going so that's this week's packs so we're going to now have a look at um, some of the plants from previous packs and see how they're getting along. So this is some of the plants that I've got inside the polytunnel. Um, we had a sweet william, which we're looking a bit pot bound, but I took the bottom off it and I repotted it and that's doing really nice. Uh, the sage plant, there's not a lot of top growth, but I know that it's doing, it is growing because it's filling its pot up, but I'm going to leave it in that for the time being. The rocket from last year is making a comeback, the wild rocket, so I'll see if I can get a crop of that. My foxgloves probably need to go into the ground somewhere really, so I'll be doing that probably this week. The flat leaf parsley, now this is quite a hardy plant and when it, hot weather comes, and it is quite warm in here, it will go to seed. So it's got a lot of leaf on, so rather than waste it, what I will be doing is taking, I'll be harvesting some of it and that might sort of um, stop it from going to seed quite so quickly. Well that smells good. Some welcome greenery this time of year. So I've got my hardy annuals, they're going well. Um, I do need to repot 
my delphinium. So that's going to go into a bigger pot and also my chives. And the way to tell if you need to repot is to have a look at the base of it as usual. And the roots are poking through and I can see that this one has filled its pot. So we'll put that in a bigger pot and then I'll cut it down to there and harvest them to get it to regenerate. And excitingly, the seeds we sowed last time brought beans. One of them's germinating. And the other one is actually germinating, because I can see its root, though it hasn't put top growth on yet. And so far, the mouse hasn't found them. <laughs> I'm going to fox them. So we're going to have a quick look at the other plants outside. So these, some of, these are some of the plants that we grew last year. And some of them, are, this is the red kale. And what I'm going to do with this, it's very long and leggy, and I'm going to try and get it to put a bit of spring growth on. Just for one harvest, it will go to seed. But sometimes, like what this is trying to do here, you'll get a bit of greenery. So I'm going to try it with that one. And I'm going to do the same with the cabbage as well and see what happens as a bit of an experiment. Okay. What else? So we've got these lasagna pot. I don't know if this, I think that one's from this year and this is from the year before. So the crocuses and the iris are all up. And the herbs are going strong, the rosemary and the thyme. The strawberries, put three in a pot. So what a good thing to do with your strawberries if plants, if you've got them at this time of year, is to take off the old leaves, the big old leaves, and it'll regenerate some new. That's what I'm going to do with these, and it stops them getting diseases as well. So, look, we'll see what they do. So, tulips are coming up here as well. So, it's all very exciting, it's all happening. And you could also be trimming back some of this old growth from last year. So it's not urgent that you do that, it will protect these are snapdragons, and it will protect them if there's a frost. So, that's up to you. So that's about it for this week and there's like lots going on. It's really exciting time of year. So happy, happy growing and uh, let us know how you're getting on. Get some pictures on Facebook of your lasagna pots and uh, anything else? Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.